How much would you have made if you would have invested $100,000 in Google back when it was just getting started? That's exactly what David Cheriton did, and today his net worth is over $9.8 billion. That's probably one of the best investments ever. However, not everyone gets such a chance to become a billionaire. Not everyone has an extra hundred grand to throw it at another startup. Nonetheless, there are countless opportunities all around. Do you know that 1,700 people just in the US are becoming millionaires every single day? And if you want to be one of them, you gotta start somewhere. But here is the problem. 40% of Americans can't even cover unexpected thousand dollar bill because they are just living paycheck to paycheck, so most people can't even pull out a thousand dollars to invest. But a hundred bucks? That's easy. Almost everyone can afford that. However, it seems like you can't do much with it. Since even for example, a single Apple stock costs twice that amount. And let's not even talk about Amazon or Google. Even index funds are not an option. How much do you think 100 bucks over 40 years with 8% returns would amount? Just a little over $2,100. But don't worry, because there are actually legit great ways to invest even as little as 100 bucks, which we are going to share with you here in this video. So let's start with the first one, start a business. Now that sounds cliche, right? Now to start a business, it seems like you clearly can start with 100 bucks, but believe it or not, there are actually a handful number of businesses you can start with as little as 100 bucks. The problem with most of us is that when we think of starting a business, we always imagine big businesses and ignore all the small ones that are much easier to start. You can buy a lawn mowers for 100 bucks, for example, and start a side business cutting your neighbor's grass. You can even start a YouTube channel with 100 bucks, or you just have to share your ideas and experiences. Even the most successful ones started with almost nothing. You can start by ordering a Yeti microphone for a little over a hundred bucks and start making videos. Initially, you would maybe feel horrible because you know nothing about video editing or animations, but take it as a hobby and no business. But gradually, you'll start improving the quality and it would become a business. Now, you don't necessarily have to start a YouTube channel. There are endless numbers of online businesses that do not require a lot of capital. Let's say you are good at playing a guitar or violin. You can find someone who can help you with shooting and editing it for as little as a hundred bucks. Turn it into an online course and sell it online. And the great part about it is that you don't even need a website because right now, there are multiple great platforms to sell courses for free. And if it turns out to be successful, you can slowly turn it into a legitimate business. You can easily earn back your money and make much more. Consider yourself lucky to be alive in this age because no matter where you are in the world, pretty much everyone has internet. So this is probably a great option for most people. Now, second is to trade some stocks. A lot of people keep watching videos or read about the stock market, hoping to start investing one day. If you haven't bought a single stock, the world of the stock market is probably quite ambitious to you. When you actually get in and start, a lot of things start getting clear. Reading and watching videos about the stock market is one thing, and investing or trading is something else. What seems so obvious in theory isn't that easy in practice. When you buy a stock and it goes down right in front of your eyes, you get emotional, your brain stops working, and your emotions get in charge. All that will be in your mind is to minimize losses. That's when you really learn. The point isn't to turn those hundred bucks into a thousand, but to experience the market. Because when you are trading with real money, you will be much more careful and cautious. Since your money is at stake, it's actually fun to look for the right company to throw your money in. You will read about many different companies, analyze their financial statements, figure out if their price is undervalued or overvalued, and then make up your mind if this company is worth your money or not. This experience is totally worth it even if you lose 100 bucks. In fact, if you decide to invest a larger amount, you will at least know how the market works. Thirdly, invest in books. Many of you must have spent your childhood watching your parents live paycheck to paycheck and struggle financially. And most of you must have grown up hearing from your parents that if you keep getting good grades, you will find a good job when you grow up and you won't have to worry about money. But at some point, you realize that it's not true. So what you must do to educate yourself more about finances, just start reading books outside the school and one of those magical books is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You will be introduced to the world of money and to be honest, you will be shocked about how little you knew about money even though you use it every day. 
That is the lens shift moment for you that also shifts your mentality, your perspective changes, and you will start making different decisions that will slowly lead you to financial independence. Now, also, a lot of people watch a video or two here on YouTube, and then they think that they are financial gurus. Let me ask you something. How many videos you have watched for the past week? Dozens, if not hundreds. Because YouTube is entertainment. You might learn a thing or two, but it's not gonna work like when you read a book. Because usually it takes you a couple of days, if not weeks, to finish a single book, and by then, these ideas will be embodied in you. Some of the good books on this matter are The Millionaire Fast Lane, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and few others. Number four, buy and sell something. A lot of people don't have even basic business experience. Many people are engrossed in their jobs that they haven't experienced making single penny outside their job. So, when you tell them to start a business, they keep postponing it because it's a strange world for them. But business is all about selling and most businesses do not even build their products but rather just buy low and sell high. The grocery store besides your house, for example, they do not produce what they sell, they have a supplier. The process of business is simpler than you think but quite difficult to implement. The good news is that you don't have to spend big and open your store to learn that. You can just go to eBay and find something that you can resell to people in your social circle for a slightly higher price. That experience will improve your social skills, analytical skills, and negotiating skills. You might not make a lot of money out by buying and selling with a hundred bucks. However, you will learn much more than you will do with a four-year degree in business. You will have to analyze the market, who would be your potential consumers, what would be the appropriate price, how to deal with your clients, and on and on. In fact, there are actually people who make a living out of these. But if you think that's not for you, here is another idea. The last is to learn a valuable skill. What you can also do is to use that 100 bucks to learn a skill that will earn much more later on. This is probably the best option if you're struggling financially or looking for a side hustle. You can invest in a social media course. Every business is now looking for someone who actually understands how these algorithms work. Or you can learn graphic designing, copywriting, web designing. There are endless number of online opportunities. Of course, you can find free materials, even here on YouTube. So why buy a course? Usually, the free stuff isn't as good as paid courses. They are better organized and after taking the entire course, you feel like you actually learned the skill compared to the free stuff where you have to keep searching for everything separately. And secondly, once you pay for something, you feel obligated to take that course because you just spent a hundred bucks. In fact, it will probably motivate to take action after taking the course to earn back the money that you spent on the course. So, a hundred bucks isn't a lot of money and you can't do much with it, so all the options we discussed in this video are more about educating yourself. Stepping up your business and analytical skills and getting valuable experience, that will pay back in the long run. Thank you for watching and see you guys soon.